Welcome back to the 30 day challenge. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about gear every crappie fisherman needs, whether it's in your boat, your kayak, canoe, uh, even you bank fishermen guys, a lot of you are probably gonna find these tools very useful. And this is not just rods and reels, stuff like that. This is stuff you use either on the bank, in your boat, or even at home um, after you're done fishing. So let's start talking about what I probably use the most, line spoolers. Um, this one, this is made by PC Fun. I will leave a link to everything down below in the video description. I use this a lot. After I go on trips to wherever, Texas, Tennessee, Missouri, wherever my boat decides to take me, uh, I need to re-spool a lot. So this is probably the, the best tool for re-spooling um, that's ever been invented. Uh, a bunch of different companies make these, but it's a super simple setup. You just put the spool of line between those, locks it in, and then if you're using a, a bait casting setup, you can kind of lock it into this position right here. Your reel goes right here and then just unspools onto the reel. Uh, if you're using a spinning setup, this thing can actually rotate like that to help prevent the line twist as you're reeling new line on your reel. Uh, I use this quite a bit, so, and I think this is like 15 bucks. Solid investment, leave it at your house. Um, you don't need to take it in the boat with you, but when you're re-spooling all your stuff, especially if you got half a dozen rods or so, this thing really helps. Number two, everybody needs a fishing scale. This is probably, I, I used a few different scales over the years. Probably by far, a lot of a lot of you have probably seen videos of other people using this. This is made by Rapala. Um, I forget the exact model. It's a 50 pound scale, um, but I'll leave a link below. You can actually pick this up at crappiecove.com. Shout out to those guys in Tennessee for supporting me. Um, the cool thing about this, you can actually keep up to eight fish, save up to your eight biggest fish and uh, every single day. You can, I think you can actually store multiple days weights on this as well. Uh, highly recommend this. If you're gonna buy one scale, this is the one I would buy. There's others out there, but this is definitely the scale that I would look at getting. Uh, whether you're a crappie fisherman or a bass fisherman, this Rapala scale is phenomenal. Uh, touch screen, and you can save up to eight fish on this, which for those tournament guys that keep seven fish, you got one extra slot for a big fish or something. So highly recommend that. Everybody needs a scale. You gotta be able to measure your fish. This is a little bump board made by Rapala. Um, you can pick these up at pretty much any sporting goods store I know, um, and even hardware stores probably have this. This is a bump board I pretty much always use. Some of you guys have that little crappie keeper. It's like a little, you throw the crappie in the little plastic thing in it. That works too, but if you're a multi-species angler and you want something that actually folds out to a full, can't even get it in frame, I think it's 60. Yeah, this is 60 inches, so you can do the you measure your little crappie, and then you can measure your big old, big old musky. The next thing to go along with that line spooler is to actually take this the line off your spool. Um, this little thing made by Berkeley, really cool. If you got just a like a Milwaukee drill bit, attaches right into there. I don't know if you guys can see that, attaches right into that, and. Uh, you can just zip off your line. If you have a, a spinning reel set up, just set your drag to really loose, and then this will take the line off real good. If you got a baitcaster set up, same kind of thing. Turn the drag down. This will take the line off very fast. And then once you're done, you just unscrew the end here, just like that, and the line will actually slide right off the end. And you can throw the line in the trash or recycle or whatever you need to do with that line. Really, really good tool. I think this is less than 10 bucks, so. Good, solid investment. Buoy markers, every crappie fisherman needs a buoy marker. Uh, these are the little ones, the kind of the low profile markers. Compared to these big, ooh, these big old, big buoy markers, got the rattles in them. And yeah, typically they have a weight. Sometimes when you lose the weight, you just need to put a, a bolt with some washers and a lock nut on the end. That's really rusted. That was in this little boat that I'm fishing in right now. Some of you might have noticed I don't have my big boat. That's because the lower unit is still getting worked on. So hopefully by the time you see this video, I'll have my big boat back. But highly recommend this. I've done a number of videos so far this fall marking brush piles, especially in shallow water. 
time I've done a few videos in shallow water, mark the brush pile, throw it out there. Make sure you get a really accurate drop with these because that's gonna allow you to cast very accurately onto that brush pile if you don't have forward-facing sonar of some kind. Great tool if you're a crappie fisherman. All right, let's talk about kind of what you need for line care. Three things I, I probably use the most on just a day-to-day -day basis that is not my fishing rod or reel setup. Braid scissors, I know they're, they're braid technically, but they'll cut any line. I wanna say these are less than, less than five bucks. These are made by Rapala. I'll link them below. I got two different sets of pliers here. So this is your surgical style plier. This is actually really good for basically any, any species. Your panfish that have smaller uh, mouths like your bluegill, you can get these little, these little clippers down in their mouth. Um, and then if you catch something with a lot of teeth, like a pike, you can actually reach in there. They're, it's got a pretty long stem on it. So you can actually reach in, grab the lure. I think you can get a pack of these. I'll link it down below, but I think you can get a pack of these uh, surgical things for about 15 bucks and you can get like six or seven of them. Um, so I'll link this down below. The other style is basically more of your, your multi-tool plier. Um, if you see on the middle of this, when I close it, you can pinch weights. You can get that little hook right there. That's actually for those, uh, that's actually for the O-rings. So you can change out treble hooks on your crankbait, um, but that's, this is more of your heavy duty style players. I use them both quite a bit. Everybody needs players in their boat and everybody needs scissors in their boat. So I will link these down below. These are great. If you don't have them yet, at least get the scissors and some sort of players. Highly recommend. All right, let's talk about jig boxes. Because as crappie fishermen, we have a, we got a ton of jigs. A ton of jigs like this. These are kind of three different styles. So this one's made by Euro Tackle. You can see I have all my tungsten jigs in there. Uh, this is more of your ice fishing style, but you can throw it in your boat. It's super compact, it's super thin, look at that. It's maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And you can put a bunch of jigs there. Typically on this side, see how these white are empty? You can actually put plastics. Uh, again, this is kind of made for ice fishing. Your tackle makes more of the microplastics. So you can probably put a bunch of microplastics in there. These, again, are kind of designed for ice fishing because you just put them in your like your bib pocket, super compact. I got a lot of questions on, whenever I have a video showing this Gamakatsu 3600 box, people ask where to get it. I'll leave a link below. Amazon, I think they're about $20, um, but it's a split foam setup. Hopefully this thing focuses, yeah. Split foam setup for all your hair jigs. It allows your hair jigs to dry out. You can even put just regular jigs in there. Um, but this is what I use for all my hair jig setups. As you can see, some of those are hand, actually a lot of those are, a lot of those are hand tied jigs, uh, ACC crappie sticks, and I hand tied some of, most of them actually. Some of our other people tied them for me, but. Now, if you just, we're talking regular jig heads, you probably want something like this. Let's see if we can open it up without spilling the jigs all over the place. Yeah. So you want something like that. Decent organization, separate out your weights. Up here I got, looks like I got 16th, 16th ounce jigs, 1 8th, and then 3 16th on the bottom here. Got a lot of jig heads, but you don't need a full on, like you don't want a full on box like this. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are great for everyday use, but if you don't want to cram you know, if, you, if you're working with a smaller boat or a kayak, this smaller box is, is great, and I'll link it below. Um, so those are kind of the three different jig boxes that I use. Highly recommend all three, but if you, especially if you, got, if you got hair jigs, I recommend this thin profile, it's super light. Gamakatsu 3600 size box, I'll leave a link in the video description. Probably the last thing, uh, when it comes to crop fishing, you need some place to put your plastics. Some people put them in boxes like this, and uh, 
then all their plastics melt together, their colors bleed. I have not had great success with those. These are just, these are bass jigs, so I'm not too concerned. When it comes to crappie plastics, you can see that is stuffed full right now. Berkeley makes a binder. They actually make two different sizes. They make a little folder, which is like half this size. And then they make this big old binder. And I'm afraid to unzip it, honestly. I don't want things falling out, but it can cram a ton of plastics in there. This is how I store all of my plastics uh, for crappie fishing. So that is probably the last piece when it comes to jigs and lures. Put your plastics in a binder. Plus, you can, if you're fishing in a buddy's boat, you can always just throw your stuff in here pretty neatly. And they got this side pocket that I'm pretty sure you can just slide that jig box right in that side pocket. So you got your jigs and your plastics all in one. That is the gear that every crappie angler should have. One thing I did want to mention that's kind of in this area, but it's the fishing sonar. There's actually a lot of good sales going on right now with Garmin. Um, I'm gonna link some units down below. You can get a live scope bundle with a nine inch screen for like 1700 bucks. Brand new LVS32 GLS10 black box live scope kit, and then a Echo Map 93SV um, for like 1700 bucks. Hands down the best deal that Garmin has ever come out with. Um, so I'm gonna leave that down below as well, because I know a lot of people, if, if you're looking at getting a live scope and you're waiting for the best price, that's brand new anyway, the 1700 bucks is the best price that they've ever offered. So I'll leave that link down below. They got to also, if you want 10 or 12 inch screens, they got some really good deals going on too. So if you got any comments and questions about the gear that I used or how I use it or anything like that, post them in the comment section below. If you thought there should have been something added to this list that I might've missed, which I could have, maybe I forgot to bring it, um, post in the comment section below for others to look at and check out. Um, otherwise, if you got any questions, message me on Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this season, and uh, hope you're enjoying the 30-day challenge. I'll see you in the next one.